You know, I normally start off these features with a short history of the franchise. Talk about its prequels, history, etc. You know how it goes. I'm not going to do that with the Legend of Zelda games, as simply thinking about the timeline of the series is enough to melt your head. So, The Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks then. It may look like the sequel to the 2007 DS title Phantom Hourglass, but it's set several hundred years after that. So the Princess Zelda and Link from that adventure are long dead, unless Hyrule have developed cryogenics. So while it could be considered a sequel, it does and doesn't star the same characters. This is pretty much par for the course with Zelda games, but it isn't half confusing. It also sports the same controversial cel-shaded style that started in the GameCube title The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. Controversial once, perhaps, but I think it's grown on most of us now. Anyhow, the story. The new Link is an apprentice engineer for the Hyrulean Royal Family's train company. Link learns from Zelda that these tracks aren't just for transport, but also act as a seal for the Demon King Maladas, who was imprisoned several centuries before. What's wrong with a prison, eh? But wouldn't you know it, some blight is planning to release the Demon King, and the only way to do so is to use Princess Zelda to destroy the spirit tracks that seal him in. And she's been kidnapped too! <laughs> Looks like the kid in the Robin Hood costume is about to embark on another epic quest. You won't be doing the quest alone this time, luckily. But don't worry, no irritating fairies and female imps with you this time. The evil minions only managed to kidnap the princess's body. So for the first time ever in a Zelda game, unless you count the spoiler in Ocarina of Time and the CDI games, Zelda will be along the ride with you. She may only be with you in spirit, but she can possess giant stone knights known as Phantom Guardians to help pwn some enemies with you. Even if she does look like Alphonse from Full Metal Alchemist in the process. Aside from a few control improvements, if you've played Phantom Hourglass, you'll feel right at home with Spirit Tracks. But if you haven't battled Ganon in the DS before, the main difference is you completely control Link using a stylus, pointing on the screen where you want him to go next. It's more intuitive than the point and click game, and soon becomes second nature after a few minutes. It even feels quite refreshing. Another rather interesting new feature is the way the game incorporates the often overlooked DS microphone into the game. Surprisingly, Link has dumped his ocarina this time. Then again, having a DS in your mouth would look rather silly, wouldn't it? But this time he's taken up the spirit flute, which he'll play by blowing into the mic whilst dragging the flute back and forth using the stylus. Yeah, it's pretty cheesy, but it's a great little addition to immerse yourself further into the game. There's also a rather neat multiplayer mode thrown in for good measure. Even better is you only need one cart to play it too. In terms of Zelda games, Spirit Tracks is a pretty lengthy quest too. You're looking at a good 20 hours if you play the game straight from start to finish, even when using a walkthrough. And at least another 5 to 7 on top if you partake in the side quests. So it's a great handheld title to keep you entertained through the dark winter months. So if you're howling for more Hyrule, Make sure your next quest is to pick up a copy of Zelda Spirit Tracks from Gameplay Today. I can't wait to bomb some Dodongos!